Hi, I'm Neil and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how you can find the right bride and grooms for you and your style, why it's really important that you do this and why, when you do, you will end up booking more weddings. So let's crack on! Now, it's a fact that when it comes to running a wedding photography business, being good at marketing yourself and your business is actually more important than being a good photographer. An excellent business person who is an average photographer will almost always be more successful than an excellent photographer who is only average at business. So it's, it's really important, especially if marketing and promoting your work doesn't come naturally to you, that you put in as much effort as you can into this area. So just as all wedding photographers are unique with different styles and different approaches, so too are brides. So when we're marketing ourselves, we should always be thinking of whether what we are putting out there to the world is fitting in with our style and is going to attract the right bride for the way that we as individuals work. So why do this? Well, when I have a good connection with my couples, and I'm sure that you'll be the same, and they totally get the way that I work, I find that everything just becomes so much easier on the day and, and less stressful. And those weddings are the days that I love the most. And at the opposite end of the scale, if I ever photograph the weddings of couples who I feel don't really get my style and maybe want images which are not really me, and this still does happen, I find that those weddings are just much harder and more stressful because I end up trying to work in a way which just isn't me and doesn't come naturally. Mentally, I also feel much more comfortable with the couples who get what it is that I'm trying to achieve for them. And inevitably, as a result, I find that I end up producing my best work at those weddings. And the more good images I take on a wedding day, which suit my style, the easier it is then to attract the next couple and so it goes on. So attracting the right couples for you and the way that you work is really important for both you and your couples. So, so the big question is, how do we do this? Well, the biggest thing which you can do, in my opinion, is to be consistent with your style and your message and only show the images online which define that style of yours and which you would like to be booked for. For example, if you love shooting natural light portraits, don't show images where you've used flash. Likewise, if you like taking carefully posed classical portraits, don't show portraits which are more natural. Try just to be consistent with the images which you are showing. When it comes to my work, above anything else on a wedding day, I prioritise two things. Capturing real moments in a strictly, and quite strictly myself, documentary fashion, and also bride and groom portraits. So, as such, if you look at my website or my Instagram, 99% of what you will see will be photographs of real moments and couple portraits. And as you can see on my Instagram, not only am I showing natural moments and portraits, but I would also like to think that there's a real consistency throughout the images which I am showing. Plus, I'm only showing what I believe to be the best of my best work because I personally believe in quality over quantity. Now, when couples look at our work for the first time, we may only have their attention for a, just a few seconds. So I think it's really important that we use that time to make sure that the couple are only seeing our best work and the work which best conveys our style. Now, as I mentioned, for me, it's all about showing real moments and portraits, but that's not to say that I don't take detail photographs throughout the day because I always do at every single wedding which I photograph. As you can see here, here's some examples on the screen of detail shots which I've taken. And likewise, I always take as many group shots as my couples would like me to as well. But I just choose not to show them publicly because they are not the shots that I want my couples to book me for. Now if I do show the odd group photograph, which I sometimes do, it will only be those shots which I feel fit into the style which I want to convey. In other words, relaxed and fun, just like these for example. And I'd like to think that every part of my website is pushing those two things, natural moments and portraits. 
And I do this because firstly, I want to be booked by couples who share my passion for those natural moments and portraits, but also because I almost want to put off couples who may not prioritize those sort of images and may want, for example, lots of detail shots or other types of images which don't really fit into my style. And narrow it down even further than that, many of my portrait photographs which I show will be taken at sunset or even later in the day. And because of this, the couples who book me will almost always be keen to have portraits taken late at night because when they first saw my work, they were attracted to those images. And if they weren't my couple, so to speak, they may not want to go out at night for portraits, which would be a real shame and it would mean that I wouldn't be able to take the shots which I really enjoy. Now, another example is photographs in the rain. If your couple haven't seen any photographs which you've taken in the rain, then the chances are they're probably not going to want to go outside on their wedding day if it does rain, or it's gonna be a much harder sell for you to get them out. But by showing those shots online, if you want to take those shots, of course, you will attract the brides who don't mind going outside in the rain. They don't mind getting the dress a little bit dirty because they've seen what it is you're capable of taking. And in fact, one of the best things that I can hear from brides sometimes who, who have booked me is that they're actually looking forward to it raining on their wedding day because they know the images that we'll be able to take if it does. And that's an example of, of where you've really attracted the right bride for your style. Now being very particular about the shots which you choose to show online may end up putting some couples off your work but I don't think that's always a bad thing as it means that they probably weren't the right couple for you in the first place but more importantly for those couples who are looking for a photographer who prioritise the shots which you also are really passionate about you'll be in a much stronger position to book that wedding because you're not diluting those images by showing things which you maybe don't enjoy taking as much and you don't prioritize as highly. Now, the same goes for the tone of voice of your website and your emails and, and the wording that you use. I like to work with couples who are fun and they're relaxed, so I try to convey that in my communications too. So my emails, for example, are chatty, informal, I like to use emojis. So I probably put off the couples who are more formal but again i don't see that as being a bad thing because all this is helping me to find the right bride and grooms for me and my style and ultimately that's going to help both myself and the bride and groom now another thing to consider is where the bride and grooms which you want to attract will be looking for their wedding photographer for example i know that for me when couples tell me how they found me the places which are the most successful for me in terms of converting those inquiries into bookings are when the bride and grooms have found me from word of mouth recommendations be it from venues friends or other suppliers second to that is google so those are the places which i concentrate more on because i know that they work for me in terms of attracting the couples who are a good fit for my style now i do get inquiries on facebook too but i find that those couples almost never end up booking me so i tend not to put as much effort into facebook because of that but for other photographers, Facebook can be brilliant. So if that works for you, then maybe that's where you put your efforts. It's whatever works best for you. A good little exercise for doing all this can be to picture your perfect couple in your mind. You can even give them names. Let's call them, for example, Lucy and Dylan. Ask yourself, where will Lucy and Dylan be looking for their wedding photographer? If it's on Google, what will they be typing into Google? If it's on Instagram, what will they be doing on Instagram to start their wedding photographer search? And when they do come across your website or Instagram, which images are going to appeal to them the most? Because they are the ones that you should therefore be showing uh, the most of. Now, the more that you get to know Lucy and Dylan, your imaginary couple, and the more that you understand about them and what type of people they are, the easier it will be to help you find them and make sure that the images which you are showing are going to appeal directly to them. And as I mentioned earlier, when you do photograph the wedding of your Lucy and Dylan, the more you're going to enjoy it, the better your images will be, and the more you're likely to get recommended afterwards. And the more of those weddings you do, the more you're going to get to know who who your ideal couples are and therefore the easier it's going to be to find them in the future. 
but it's not quite as simple as just showing the right images. I also think it's important to tell couples who inquire with you why you work in the way that you do and why you're so passionate about working that way. For example, couples often initially inquire with me because they like the creative portraits which I show, such as these. But when we meet, I explain to them that the portraits are a relatively small part of the day and for the majority of their wedding day, I want to be in the background capturing moments and emotion as they would happen even if I wasn't there. And I explain to them that the reason for this is because I wholeheartedly believe that in 20 years time or when they're showing their children their wedding photographs in, in years to come, it is these natural shots which show real genuine emotion which are going to become priceless to them. If Lucy and Dylan then decide to book me, I know that they totally get why I work in the way that I do and why I'm so passionate about working that way and that will ultimately mean that I am going to love being a part of their day and the photographs which I take are going to be my best work. So it just works out perfectly for everyone. So my advice to you now would be to look at your social media and look at your website through the eyes of your imaginary ideal bride and groom and just see if the images which you're showing and the wording that you're using is going to appeal to them. And if it doesn't, then they're the change that you, you should be making. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.